Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's use the same technique that we used to find the Laplace transform for the second derivative on finding the Laplace transform of the third derivative. All right, so what we're going to do is notice on the upper right corner here we have the Laplace transform of the first derivative and the Laplace transform of the second derivative. But using the technique of the Laplace transform of the first derivative on what we have over here, we can say that this cannot be written as S times the Laplace transform of the second derivative of the function because notice we so simply reduce it by one derivative from the third down to the second minus and that would be the second derivative of the function evaluated at zero. Now what we're going to do is we're going to replace this by what that is equal to over here. So now this can be written as s times the Laplace transform of the second derivative can be replaced by s squared times the Laplace transform of the function of t minus s times the function evaluated at zero minus the first derivative of the function evaluated at zero. So the Laplace transform of the second derivative is now replaced by this, which is right there, the equation we have there. And then we subtract from that minus f double prime of zero. In other words, minus the second derivative of the function evaluated at zero. Now all we have to do is multiply the s in by each term that's in there. So this is equal to s cubed times the Laplace transform of f of t minus s squared because it's s times s times the function evaluated at zero minus s times the first derivative of the function evaluated at zero minus f double prime or the second derivative evaluated at zero and all that is now equal to the Laplace transform of the third derivative of the function and that's how we find the Laplace transform of any derivative, we just keep going with the very same technique, but I think you begin to see the pattern. In each case, for every additional derivative, derivative we'll have an additional s, so we have s for the first derivative, s squared for the second derivative, s cubed for the third derivative, times the Laplace transform of the original function, and then see minus s squared times the function evaluated at zero, minus s times the first derivative of the function at zero, minus the second derivative evaluated at zero and so forth, and I think you're beginning to see the pattern. Now we're going to see how we can apply that by solving some simple differential equations using this technique that we see here. And that's how it's done. 